G'day Bomber fans, it's an early end of the year, we can we can book our September holidays, uh, the season is now done, which of course means it's now time for our end of season review. I will recap the year, go over what I liked, what I liked, uh, not as much, uh, talk about how we can improve everything you'd expect from a review really. It's it's going to be a longer video today, so strap yourselves in, uh, we got a lot of talking to do. Before I get into the nitty gritty, I'm going to hit the refresh button, get you all back up to speed with the year. It, it started with a bang, we belted the lowly Hawks, I, I think we are all a bit nervous going into that game because we didn't know where we sat as a team. It was hard to judge us uh, from our pre-season. We, we had a poor pre-season but beating them with uh, ease helped settle the nerves and then we went on to win three of our next four matches including an emphatic gather round victory over the top four demons. From there it was straight losses but it wasn't a poor form patch. We played some of the very best teams and took them to the wire. We should have won on Anzac Day against the Pies. We lost to the Cats, narrowly lost to the Power and the fourth game uh, loss came at the Gabba against the Lions. It was four straight losses followed by four straight wins though. We won a thriller on Dreamtime, smashed the Eagles, didn't quite smash the Ruse, and then of course beat the Blues in our last game before the bye. After the bye it was a different Essendon team. We only won three of our last ten games, two of which came against the Eagles and the Ruse. We beat the Crows really well, uh, lost a thriller against Port, but aside from that it was pretty poor really. We obviously were belted by the Cats, Dogs and Pies, but that 126 point loss to GWS, uh, well it puts a big stain on what was before that a very positive year. So let's talk a bit about positivity and what it really means. Let's talk about what our expectations were leading into the season. So I think it's often easy to, I guess, misjudge a team's season thinking they are in a different spot to where they are supposed to be. For example, if you to look at us and the Bulldogs compare us, you would say on face value they had the better year because they finished higher on the ladder. But I would say our year was more of a success because we came from a bottom four finish the year before. We got a new coach, new players. We have a much younger team. We were never in contention for a flag. And Scott said all year, which I respect uh, we are about the long term. It's easy to get caught up in that elusive finals victory, I know I did, and think the year is a failure because we didn't make the eight, but our expectations were really just to improve. We weren't after on-field success, we said it multiple times. The season was about the long term, improving players, improving our system, maintaining a consistent team culture. It's hard to definitively measure what our expectations were, but really it was about visible improvement and stability, so did we meet those expectations? Well, in reality, it's hard to say after after the recent performances. I think this is a box that we can tick off when we know more about this team in a year or two's time, for example. But as a whole, it's hard to say we didn't improve. We won more games, we competed more, we showed more reason to trust the team until late. It's super disappointing because when I filmed the mid-season review, I was thrilled. I gave us an A grade. We were all very happy, but then we just ran out of legs. Young teams do that, don't get me wrong, but the lack of maturity was alarming. I, I do think we took big steps though. Young players developed a lot more than we expected. Six of our under 22-year-olds to start the year played over 20 games. We saw players like Nick Martin, Ben Hobbs, Jai Menzi, uh, Sam Durham, Archie Perkins, Jai Caldwell all became cemented first-team players. And then others like Langford and Redmond managed to outdo themselves and earn um, All-Australian nominations and become stars of the team. If you told me that we would have been a game outside the eight while missing players like uh, Peter Wright, Scheel, Stringer and Draper for huge chunks of the year, I wouldn't have believed you, but that is what happened. Our young Younger players showed a lot to be happy about. You have a really clear, talented young group of players that individually improved in season 2023, which to me says we met expectations, but then you have the fact we crumbled so easily late into the year, looked worse than we have since the drug scandal. You can't take away those performances and say they were one-offs. We had four or five games in the second half of the year that were damning. I think we built a foundation early that could set us up for the future, but whether or not that is undone through the recent performances is tough to tell. You can't just discount the first half of the year uh, because of the recent losses and you can't do the same the other way. Really, I think expectations were met, but I think it's far from a positive season in my eyes. Speaking of positives, we're going to talk a bit about them. I'm going to keep this section pretty light because most of what I'm going to discuss are things I discussed in the mid-year review. For starters, I really like our youth. We are the second youngest team in the comp. We fielded inexperienced zones and stood tall a fair amount of the time. It's great to see young players improve as a whole after 2022 where I felt like they mostly took backward steps in my eyes. And then you have the fact that players like Harry Jones, Nick Cox, Zach Reed didn't really play all that much because of injury. Those are players a few years back who we thought would be our best youngsters now, uh, but at the moment they are untapped potential. So for us to be in this strong of a position with our youth without seeing much of them, to me that is really promising and it gives us fans a reason to be excited for the next few seasons. I was really impressed with our game style until I wasn't. Uh, the fact that we had a clear cut style is something we have lacked recently uh, under other coaches. Even at our worst uh, this season, we still tried to play 
play our way, which you have to give credit to. I think Scott got the most out of this list with all the injuries we had and all the inexperience. So the fact that he clearly drilled a system into them is impressive to me. I, I like watching a game and knowing that we won't be completely lost, uh, completely confused. I think that's the big difference between last season and this season. Last year, we just looked confused as a team. We didn't buy into trucks coaching. This year, we looked flat and defeated at the end of the year. Obviously, neither is any good, but the fact that the boys for 90% of the year were playing footy, they wanted to, and that Scott wanted to, I liked that as a fan. And finally, for positives, I really liked that we had that glimpse that showed us we were able to compete regularly with the best teams in the league. We beat the Demons, we had the Lions on the ropes for a half despite having a B-grade defence, we had two near siren thrillers against Port, and we obviously choked that three-quarter time lead against the Pies that we should have won. We really did bring it to the best teams in the league, and that to me, I mean, for a while we were trustworthy. It was an enjoyable season for us, an enjoyable experience. So for us to see that, I think it's as important as seeing the wheels fall off. We know that we can be that good, be a top five or six team, but we have to let that bottom four second half fuel us so we stay consistent in the future. Uh, what I didn't like about the season, um, to state the obvious, the wheels fell off. You often see young teams lose momentum, but that was next level. The difference between our worst and our best was stark. We conceded over 100 points five times for the year, and four of those times came after the bye. We were defensively so strong early, kept high score teams down but later on as we know we let the floodgates open far too easily and the same thing happened in attack we uh, became a different side really we scored over a hundred five times before the bye and managed it just once after our biggest loss before the bye was 42 points after the bye we lost by that margin or around that margin four more times so you can see the difference we clearly were a very different side post bye it does happen to young teams but rarely to this extent that to me shows there's a real lack of maturity and leadership the old heads really really couldn't stabilize the sinking ship. Uh, you look at our leadership group, it's just a captain and a vice captain. We didn't appoint a large one because we don't really have any leaders at the club. We either need to trade for some experience or hope certain players grow into leadership roles because there was a clear lack of maturity this season. I think we found out some clear holes we have with our list. For starters, we are Peter Wright reliant. Uh, Sam Wiedemann's confidence plays a huge part in whether or not he gets rowdy and kicks goals. We can't rely on him to be the partner consistently. We need another good key forward. We need more key defensive strength as well well and we need pressure in our forward line we have more holes than I initially thought the good news with that is we have a large salary cap to try and find solutions but until we do find solutions it's a worry to me and then you have the fact that we struggle to cover our best players when they're injured Jordan Ridley's injury made this team look 10 times worse than it is merit out means we lose our midfield class we have depth and list body issues that need to be resolved and even our best players in key positional roles Draper had quiet games BZT had Hawkins kick eight and Hogan kicked nine on him. Wright was held goalless a bit and struggled to have impact in some games. It shows that we have a long way to go in those key areas that can win you premierships. Our contest work all year was really disappointing. We looked absolutely dreadful at stoppages. We had patches at center clearances, but for the most part, didn't know how to defend surging teams. We struggled to consistently win contested possession counts. You look at our midfield, it's a bunch of kids and small bodies. And even when the kids mature, it's still gonna be a small engine room. We get bullied far too easily, even around the ground. I find that we lose one-on-ones more than other teams. We rely so heavily on our open play to be damaging, so when it isn't, we struggle, because if it's on the inside, we are more likely to lose. We clearly do not have the fitness standards that the best clubs do. We ran out of legs way too easily, but also just suffered way too many injuries as a club. Similar injuries. We we can't do anything about the Peter Wright injuring his shoulder in a marking contest or, or concussions, for example, but you look at Jones, Cox, uh, Reed, even Jaden Hunter, all these young, tall players suffering stress fractures or injuries similar. And then you have the niggling issues to Draper, Shield, and Stringer. Clubs deal with injuries, but ours seem all too common and similar. It's gone to a stage where us fans hate seeing tall, lanky, talented players drafted to the club because we know that they will suffer through the same injuries that Cox and Reed do. I mean, look at Joe Danaher, for example. He couldn't go for a walk without tweaking his groin with us, and now that he's at Brisbane, he's thriving. He's in the All-Australian squad. There are clearly issues with our health and fitness department. Some say it's the Tullamarine ground. I don't know. What is there for us to improve? Um, there's, there's lots, but uh, luckily Scott has a lot to work with. He has played with the toys and enjoyed himself. He wouldn't mind his parents buying him a few more though. We clearly have holes, like I said, the main ones being key positional. So if in the next few years we go all out to find a star back and forward, I think it goes a long way to us succeeding in the future, especially if we can consistently develop other areas as well. Our list is promising, we all know that, but it needs a lot of work. So the next few trades and drafts are crucial for that. I think what we all want to see improved as fans is the club as a whole. 
the culture. I want a Richmond-like winning culture from that grand final era. They they went from nobodies to being feared all around the comp. I think we all want to see that develop, and it means harsh calls have to be made, whether it be players, staff, members of the board. I want to see more harsh calls made to try and find the right mix and build for the future. For us to succeed on field, we need to find the right inclusions off field. Is Dodoro's time up? Do we need to see a rejig of certain coach and er coaching areas? It's not something I can confidently comment on, but I think we would all be frustrated as fans to see more of the same in 2024. I think we are hopefully going to see some real fight, I guess is the right word, this preseason. Um, we're already apparently being really strict with certain players. Caroline Wilson was saying we aren't even going on a footy trip, which is just outrageous. Um, others are saying it's going to be a brutal preseason, and that is probably for the best. you got some players like Stringer, Shield, among others, senior players that we pay a lot, who really need to be the fittest in our team. We need our leaders to set the standards. I thought Merritt and Heppel did a fantastic job last year, but we didn't have enough of them. We need the whole group to buy into that. We need to be a ruthless team in order to find success. So time for a grade high school style. Up, up until round 18, I probably would have given us close to an A, a high A, a low, a high B, a low A minus, but the wheels fell off, things looked dire, we were embarrassing. I think it would be silly of me to discount the first 15 or so weeks of the year and how good we looked. I mean, we were one win outside the top four in round 17. You can't give us an E or a D after that, but the way we looked late, uh, you can't give us a high grade after those performances. I think I think it's a pass all in all, but barely. I'm going to give us a C-. minus. The foundations are set for us to improve as a club. There is a mountain of work to be done though. I think giving us a grade is near impossible though. Really a lot of what we saw is steps, uh, steps forward. And if these, these steps build towards nothing like it has in recent years, well the grade will in hindsight be far lower. But I am bullish about our direction. I feel like we have people who really know where we are at. You you know we saw Warsfold come in and try and trade for premierships and Rutten was just confused. But now we have a coach with a clear mind, a clear direction, a clear want for work and progress. I think if we are to succeed in future years, it will be off the back of this season and vice versa if we are to go the other way down the ladder and take steps back. A lot to play out though, but that's all. That is my review done. So that is that. Let me know down below what you guys think. Are there any disagreements? Anything you want to add? Feel free to do so. I will release a few videos soon. Uh, the player of the year votes next week. Uh, some AFLW content, some draft, some some trade updates, uh, but until then, cheers for watching Don's fans.